Hello everyone, welcome to a little lecture about printing images that have been rendered using Maxwell Render. Now as part of the preparation for my final year exhibition of the product design course at the University of Brighton, I made a test poster, this test poster, showing different DPIs, different sampling levels and different colour spaces. And this was so we could see what combination of these we would need in our final renders. It was printed using exactly the same printer that we would use in our final posters, so we knew exactly what combination to use. Now this isn't something that I see done a lot in people's workflows, so I thought it was worth sharing. So here's the InDesign file for this poster. And as you can see, in the top left quadrant, this is 300 dpi. Then I've got 250 dpi, 200 dpi and 150 dpi. And all of these images in their quadrants are set to their respective resolutions. And if I zoom in a bit, you can see a bit more detail. For example, here I've got my SL tests from 4 up to 18 in steps of 2. Now how I've done this is simply to set up this scene and then to render it to SL4, save the image, and then resuming the render until 6 and then stopping it and saving it, resuming it until 8, etc. all the way up till 18. And here I have my colour space tests. These are a different scene with a calibrated test card. And the render's been allowed to continue until SL18 and then saved in the different colour spaces. And then finally, the main resolution test is just a nice big 300 dpi image. And this is rendered to SL18 using Adobe 98 as the colour space, which is what I thought was the best decision at the time. However, as I'll explain later, in fact this poster allowed me to discover that maybe wasn't the best option. And then this test has simply been repeated for the different pixel densities. And one important factor I should explain as well is that these images have been rendered individually. That is, I haven't just resized the 300 dpi version to make a 250 dpi version. It's an entirely new image to get the best results when it's printed. But of course, the thing that I find most people get confused about is how big should they actually render a 300 dpi image? Well, it depends upon how big the image is going to be when it's printed. Let's take one of these SL tests as an example. If I select this frame in InDesign, and then press tab to get my menus back, you can see that it's 74.25mm wide and 47.125mm high. Now to actually work out what resolution you need in order to make it 300 dpi when printed at that size, there's various different tools you can use. For example, you can do this in Photoshop. But to quickly explain it, I'm just going to use a website called pixelcalculator.com. And here we are, pixelcalculator.com, and all I have to do is pop in my dimensions of my image and then tell it the DPI that I want to reach, 300 in this case. And pixelcalculator.com is telling me that my image needs to be 877 pixels by 557 pixels if I want it to be 300 DPI at that size. And here you can see the original file for this image and you can see it's 877 by 557. So this is definitely 300 DPI. And of course the lesson here is that that's how to work out what resolution your image needs to be. But more importantly, this poster was made in order to show us what SL and what DPI and what colour space we actually wanted to print at. Of course, using a lower DPI is going to lower the necessary resolution, which in turn will lower the time it takes to actually render the image. But we had no idea how low we could go with the DPI before the image would appear pixelated to the viewer. And the same with the SL. Obviously, lowering the SL means you will lower the time it takes to render, but how low can you go before you start to see a lot of noise in your renders? And we actually discovered that with this paper and with this printer and with the viewing distance that these posters would be viewed at, we could actually get away with 150 dpi. And upon examining the SL tests, we found that even with a very highly trained eye, we couldn't tell the difference between SL14 and SL16. And we realised that SL14 is as high as we need to go when printing at this pixel density. And with the colour spaces, we actually preferred sRGB to Adobe 98. Now in a textbook, you might say that you should use Adobe 98 rather than sRGB when printing. But the fact is that we preferred sRGB. And it also made it easier because obviously sRGB is the default colour space that Maxwell renders to. So it meant that we wouldn't have to fiddle around and set up the colour space to render to, or change it once the render was finished. All in all, it was a really useful test to have this poster made, and it was printed at A1 like our posters would be. And it's just something I don't see enough of people doing, making tests to make sure that they know what they're on about, especially when they're talking about DPI. Make sure your resolution is correct when you want to print. That's the biggest lesson here. But also remember that you maybe don't need to go to as high an SL as you think. And in certain scenarios, maybe you want a different colour space for a change. Most importantly, don't just listen to what I say. Do it for yourself and find out what you want. That's all from me this week. 
I'll see you again soon.